Greetings and welcome to the third tutorial on organization of the immune system. We are looking at the different components of the immune system and the focus in this tutorial will be to look at the third line of defense. So let's begin. All right, so we are nearly there and it is time to start considering the third line of defense. Again, we're gonna look at cells, responses, and chemical. So up here on the board, I'm gonna have my cells, responses, and chemicals. All right, when I'm looking at my cells and I'm considering what cells I have available for my third line of defense, I'm gonna to have to pull myself back down here to the second line of defense because now is the time we start talking about T cells and B cells. So the two broad categories are T cells and B cells and you're gonna notice I'm gonna leave some space between these because we're gonna talk about classes of T cells and B cells in addition to the broad term. So these cells, they're going to college. They're getting more education. They're specializing to specific types of things and they're gonna do specific tasks. When we look at the T cells, there are three main types of T cells that differentiate as they go to school, okay? So T cells, B cells, there's your AA degree. But the type of T cell, that's your bachelors of science, okay? The three T cells we're gonna talk about include helper T's. See if I can spell it. Helper T cells are going to be there to coordinate the activity of the third line of defense. We have cytotoxic T's. The cytotoxic T is going to do very much the same thing as a natural killer with one exception. The cytotoxic T cell gets to recognize the specific enemy and target the specific enemy. So cytotoxic T cell is going to be out after that staph infection, not in bacteria in general, but the staph infection. So they are specialized. The last one is the repressor T cell. This guy is an underdog. Nobody loves the repressor T cell. Hardly anybody talks about the repressor T cell. Frankly, the helper T cells and the cytotoxic T cells get to do all the cool stuff. And the repressor T cell doesn't. It does do something cool. The repressor T cell's job is to turn off the inflammation response, to turn off the immune system response, to shut everything down after we've amped up all the activity. So we oftentimes don't talk about the repressor T cell other than to mention it exists. And that's kind of shortchanging us because really we need to talk about that repressor T cell and how it is going to shut down the immune system response once the threat has been neutralized. Now, any one of these three cells can become a memory cell. We can have a memory helper T cell, we can have a memory cytotoxic T cell, we can have memory repressor cells. And those cells allow us to have a much more rapid second response to infection. The first line of, or the first response is gonna take a long time. It's gonna take maybe 10 to 14 days to produce antibodies and to be efficient. That second response can take place in 24 to 48 hours. So having those memory cells is useful in helping us have that longevity and the quick response the next time that we're exposed to something. So we're gonna put memory down here as another under bullet of T cells, just to remind yourself any of those can become memory cells. Now the B cells, they don't have quite as many branches. B cells get activated. When they are activated, they become an effector. They are going to produce plasma cells. And they're gonna produce quite a few plasma cells and those plasma cells are gonna release antibodies. In addition to the abundance of plasma cells, they're gonna develop a small cohort of memory cells. And the memory B cells are there for the next time. Again, so that that second response we're having to any invading pathogen will take place in a much more rapid time frame. All right, so what responses do we have? Turns out the T cell has one response and the B cell has another. The T cell response is called the cell mediated response. Cell-mediated response is going to require T cells to coordinate activities among the other immune system cells from the third line of defense. 
The B cells, their response is going to be the humoral response. This is not actually humoral or humorous, but the word humoral is a throwback to the time frame in the medieval ages where we had four humors, where you had black bile, I think green bile, phlegm, and blood. And so those were the four humors. The B cells, the production of the antibodies, takes place in the bloodstream, and a lot of those antibodies are in the blood. And so that humoral response is a throwback to that language from medieval times. Okay, we're getting close. So now we have to deal with chemicals. What sort of chemicals are there? There's two broad chemicals, and one of them we're going to talk about in a little more detail, which is going to be those cytotoxins. So first chemical we're going to talk about is interleukins. Now, depending on who your instructor is, you may have to know varying amounts of information about the interleukins. So the interleukins are chemicals that are signaled between leukocytes, thus the term interleukin. In fact, there are different interleukins, interleukin-2, interleukin-4, interleukin-8, and they are specific chemicals that are passed between cells. In my class, I don't expect my students to do anything more than recognize there is a chemical signal called an interleukin being exchanged. But if you're wondering how the cells are talking to each other specifically, they are using specific types of interleukins to coordinate their activity. The other chemical we're going to put up here are the cytotoxins. Those cytotoxic T cells are going to be producing cytotoxins with the goal of destroying and eliminating other foreign cells in the body, or even eliminating host cells, your cells, that have become infected with the virus. So their goal is to destroy. There are two chemicals that they use to have that effect. The first one is called a granzyme. So this is a subdivision of cytotoxins, granzyme. And granzymes are going to be enzymes that digest granules. The other one that we have is one of my favorite ones, just because of the word. It's perforin. Perforin. Sounds a lot like perforate. And that's exactly what it does. The purpose of perforin is to poke holes in the membrane of a cell. And then what was inside the cell can't stay inside the cell, so it comes out of the cell. And once it comes out of the cell, we go and die. So perforin and granzymes are two types of cytotoxins that are used by the cytotoxic T cell to have the effect of cytolysis. 